Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. We're going to look at decimals and fractions today, um, specifically uh, terminating and repeating decimals. Terminating and repeating decimals can always be written as a fraction. So those ones are known as rational numbers, okay, and they can be written as a fraction. So that's, that's an important point. Any rational number is a number that can be written as a fraction. All repeating and terminating decimals um, can be written that way. So what we're going to do today is to convert from terminating decimals or repeating decimals into fractions and vice versa. All right, we're basically going to be working a little bit with rational numbers. So first off, what is a terminating decimal? These ones are pretty easy to work with. Terminating decimals are decimals that terminate or stop. There are some examples, 0 0.75. 0 0.3, 0 0.125. Those are decimals that just stop. They can be written as fractions pretty easily, and I'll show you how. To convert those into a fraction, all you need to remember is the name of the placeholders. The first number, here represented by number 1, is the tenths place. That means it's out of 10. So however many numbers you have there, you have a 1 there, that's 1 out of 10. If you have a 2 there, that's 2 out of 10. In our example here, you have 1 tenth. You have 2 hundredths in the hundredths column, 3 thousandths, 4 ten thousandths, and 5 hundred thousandths. If you remember the names of these placeholders, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, and hundred thousandths, then Converting a terminating decimal into a fraction is going to be really easy for you. Let me show you. Here is an example. This is 0 0.12. That means it has one tenth and two hundredths. All right. What this means is it means you have 12 total hundredths. Okay. One tenth, two hundredths. That's 12 hundredths. Or in other words, 12 out of 100. And that's it. Again, you remember these names, the names of the placeholders. You can write these fractions really fast. Now, 12 out of 100, we will reduce that down to lowest terms. Each has a common factor of 4. So we can divide the top and bottom by 4 and reduce it down to 3 over 25. So let's convert 600 or 0 0.632 into a fraction. Remember 0 0.632, we look at what placeholder that is, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, and if it's the thousandths place, that means it's 632 out of 1,000. So reduce it down to lowest terms, 79 over 125, okay? But converting these fractions initially is pretty quick. Just put it, if it's in the thousandths column, you put it over the thousandths. If it's in the ten thousand, you put it over ten thousand. Hundred thousand, put it over a hundred thousand. Okay? And that's it. That's how you convert a terminating decimal into a fraction. Now, converting a repeating decimal, like 0 0.333 repeated, is a little bit more complicated of a process. So we're going to spend a little bit of time looking at that. Um, this is the process I'm going to show you here. First off, we're going to name our variable. x is equal to our repeating decimal, whatever that is. Then you look, how many numbers does it take to actually repeat? If it takes just one number, then we're going to multiply times 10. If it takes two numbers, you multiply times 100. If it takes three numbers, you multiply times 1,000. And the reason you do that is because when you multiply times that amount, it shifts the decimal. Okay? So for example, x is equal to 0.333 repeated. 10x is equal to 3.333 repeated. And this, this is going to serve a purpose because in the next slide I'll show you. What we're going to do is we're going to take 10x and subtract x. So when we have 3.333 repeated minus 0.333 repeated, we're basically going to be able to get rid of this repeating decimal because we're subtracting 333 repeated minus 333 repeated, okay? 10x minus x. When we subtract them, what we end up with on the left side of the equal sign is that we end up with 9x, and on the right side of the equal sign, we end up with 3. Notice we've gotten rid of this repeating decimal. 
And that means that we can move up to the top here and just solve 9x equals 3. Now I'm going to repeat this process a couple of different times. So if, if you need some more examples, just keep watching. But again, all we're trying to do is set this up so that when we subtract, we get rid of that repeating decimal. So let's go ahead and solve this. 9x is equal to 3. We'll take both sides and divide them by 9 so that we get x completely by itself. And then we reduce the fraction 3 over 9 to being 1 over 3. x is equal to 1 over 3. 1 third is equal to 0 0.333 repeating. That's, a, that's true. And that's how we convert repeating decimals into fractions. Like I said, a little bit more of a process than terminating decimals, but you can do this for any kind of repeating decimal. Here's an example of a repeating decimal that has two numbers. Okay? This is like saying 0 0.82828282, and that 828282 repeats. So what we're going to do, again, we'll say our variable x is equal to 0 0.82 repeating, and we're going to multiply it times 100. Again, the reason we do this is so that we get, after the decimal, these things looking exactly the same. Okay? That's the key, because when we subtract, we want to get rid of all of that. Okay, we want to get rid of 0.828282 when we subtract. So in this case, we have to multiply it times 100, or in other words, shift the decimal two places. Okay, then we'll set up our subtraction of 100x minus x. Again, the whole point is that we're getting rid of that 0 0.828282 repeating. 100x minus x gives us 99x. 82 minus 0 is 82. The decimal repeating minus the decimal repeating, they just get rid of each other, and we're left with a nice equation that we can go ahead and solve. We should feel pretty comfortable solving this type of equation at this point. We'll divide both sides by 99, and in this case, we cannot reduce 82 over 99 into more simple ter terms. It's in simplest form now. There's no common factors between them. So the decimal 0 0.828282 repeating is equal to 82 over 99. It's an interesting fraction. It's an interesting um, fraction that, that kind of coincides with that, um, that decimal. All right. Now let's look at one more example. This one will be the most complicated of the examples, um, and that is 0 0.857142, 857142. The part that repeats is this whole section. That's a pretty complicated one. So I have to multiply that times tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, millionths. All right? I have to move that decimal one, two, three, four, five, six places. All right? So my original um, x, my variable, I'm going to say is equal to our number that we're trying to convert into a fraction. And then I have to multiply times 1 million x to shift that decimal over to here. Again, everything after that decimal, that's what we're going to be subtracting and getting rid of, which is good. Um, so let's go ahead and um, continue set that up. So we set it up as 1 million x minus x, or in other words, 857,142.857142 repeating, minus 0 0.84, or 857142 repeating. Again, we're just getting rid of this repeating decimal, because you can't work with a repeating decimal. You want to get rid of it. So we're subtracting to get rid of it, which gives us 999,999x is equal to 857 or 1,142. And that is, again, very similar to what we've been working with. We're going to move up top here and solve it, because it's just a regular equation now. And we can solve for our value of x. We know x is our decimal. We've already established that. So when we find out what x is as a fraction, that's when we're going to be able to actually work with something. Now. I want to point something out at this point. We are dividing both sides of this equation by 999,999. Um, if you have a scientific calculator, this is the time to pull it out. Okay? When you have a scientific calculator, you should have a button on it that looks something like 
this. Now, this might not be the exact one that you have, but like A and B over C, something like that. Um, I've also got another calculator here that has my the fraction button looks like this. It looks like a block over a block. Okay. Any type of frac um, calculator that has fractions in it, that's what you want to be looking at. Okay. Just punch these numbers into the 857,142 and hit that button and what one 999,999 and then hit the equal sign. All right. And what that's going to do is it's going to give you the fraction in lowest terms. It already has into your calculator built in to convert fractions into lowest terms. You may as well use that feature. All right. So we reduce it down to lowest terms and it's 6 over 7. Yet the left side of the equation, these just cancel out and we're left with x. But the right side of the equation, when you get fractions that big, seriously, just um, trust me on this, you, you want to reduce it down using your calculator. All right. So x is equal to 6 over 7. Isn't that interesting? A, a nice simple fraction gives you a crazy um, repeating decimal. But we follow the same exact process and we'll solve it down. And this one here is probably more complicated than the types that you'll, you'll get inside of a test. But there, it's the same pattern that you're going to follow. All right. Now to end on um, a little bit of an easier note. When you want to convert a fraction into a decimal, that's really easy and straightforward. You just take the numerator and you divide by the denominator. Here's an example, 3 over 5. If I wanted to convert that fraction into a decimal, remember, if I can write it as a fraction, then it's either a repeating or a terminating decimal. Okay? It can't be an irrational number. So I would just take it, 3 divided by 5, and I would get my answer. 3 divided by 5 is equal to 0 0.6, and we're done. There. All right? And that is how we convert from fractions into repeating or terminating decimals. I also showed you in the previous slides how to convert from terminating decimals into fractions and also from repeating decimals into fractions.